The Disability and Philanthropy Forum presents Dom Kelly, co-founder, president, and CEO of New Disabled South and New Disabled South Rising. I think often about the um, just the barriers to accessing funds um, are often quite difficult to move past really long grant applications, um, you know, inaccessible, inaccessible uh, grant applications and the back ends that you have to navigate, right? That I have heard from many people who use screen readers who say that they're not screen reader accessible. Um, the uh, physical, the amount of physical labor it takes to type a really long grant application, um, the knowledge of some of the terminology that you might have, you might need in order to understand, um, you know, certain financial requirements, things like that, that I think can be um, laborious and um, and can really. I think contribute to that really alarming stat that um, that Emily uplifted around that 0.1% of funding that goes to disability rights and justice. Um, I think that starts often with um, the barriers that are in the way to actually accessing funding. Um, I think oftentimes reporting requirements can be very similar, um, uh, especially with small movement orgs with very limited staff capacity um and you know there's a i, I follow um this linkedin account called crappy fun crappy fundraising practice i think is what it's called um, yeah and it's so good um because they really uplift a lot of those things not through a disability lens but so many i could point back to that that lens and and i've worked with funders before on how, how do we make your practices more accessible and inclusive of, disab of disability? Not just how you, like if you funding disability, but also making the process to accessing funding more inclusive and accessible. So I think that is a big barrier in the way. Um, and I think, you know, so I think improving that is a great opportunity. Um, Trust-based philanthropy is like, I think the future and really critical, um, especially when we're talking about so many great ideas and so many great organizations in the disability rights and justice um, ecosystem that don't have access to these kinds of opportunities because of so so much of the requirements that are that you know they would be required to adhere to um and then you know i think really it's making sure that when you are thinking about funding disability talking to disabled people what we don't in that stat of 0.1 percent um we don't that is not including the typical organizations that do get funded that are not a part of this ecosystem which are the charity model um kind of medical model organizations that are looking for things like fixes or cures to disability um uh, the sort of parent-led groups, right? They have their place, but they're not disability-led. They're, you know, disabled people are don't really have seats at the table. So I think oftentimes they get a lot of the funding because there's nobody in that, in that space when you're making funding decisions who's saying, hey, th these are the groups that are doing really good work who are led by and for disabled people. Um, so making sure we have seats at the table or you're coming to us and asking for recommendations and um i think that's really critical and i think that's a way for philanthropy to kind of you know do better and would help support not just our activism but the broader ecosystem and that's going back to that like we need that that infrastructure built for us um or we, we need to build it and we need the funds to build it like that goes back to we don't get the kind of attention from the like Mackenzie Scotts of the world that, you know, other issue areas might. Um, so we need to be a part of those conversations, bring us in, have us at a seat at the table. Um, you know, if if you're doing, um, if, if you're bringing kind of folks together to sort of think about who your next, um, you know, who are going to be your, your your new grantees like make sure you have a disabled person there to talk about that as well so i i think that will help strengthen 
our broader movement um, and philanthropy really, and this goes back to not just philanthropy, it's pretty much everywhere. We talk about the census, we talk about government, like nothing about us without us. That is like maybe the, the like, what I'm trying to say with this entire spiel is like, we need to be a part of that conversation. That's gonna help us be able to do the, the work that we need to do. To continue your learning journey, visit disabilityphilanthropy.org.